Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome to Crypto Hash Review where we educate and disseminate information about Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies from Muslim perspective. And we've covered two ways in which you can um, acquire and get Bitcoin, both one way via the KYC method, another way by um, a non KYC method. Um, and we also conclude, you could say, that, that, that part of the, the process by discussing the how or to say the method. So now many people ask, oh, I get this question all the time. Is this a good time to buy? Should I buy right now? And um, there is, I mean, depends on, it really depends on who you are and what you want to achieve from Bitcoin. If Bitcoin is a store of value for you, as in you want to, store, you want to keep your money out of the banking system, out of the riba system, and you want to still have full control over your wealth, then every time is a good time to buy Bitcoin. I mean, all you're doing is transferring your money from what it currently is to what it will be. And no doubt people want to get something cheaper or you want to get a better deal as a basically the transfer because the price is not the same, not stable like that. Um, but essentially, um, your aim is not a short-term aim. You're not aiming to buy Bitcoin today and sell it tomorrow. Your aim is to have Bitcoin forever. And then when you need to spend it, you spend it. Um, so when you get in, it doesn't really matter that much. You just buy all the time. When you have money, you just convert it to a better currency and that's the end of it. Um, but most of people who, who want to think about Bitcoin, especially the newbies, they're not thinking that level yet. They haven't, they haven't really tasted the, the Bitcoin life yet. So they haven't really been committed yet to Bitcoin. So for them, it's about getting it cheap now and then maybe later on when it goes up, how many of time it goes up in their mind, it will go up forever. Um, then they will sell out and then they'll buy a house or buy a car or whatever. Um, so for them, it's always a time of when, when, when. Uh, and then often, this is always, always the case, people start, start asking about trading. Oh, brother, should I start trading? What platform should I use to trade? When's the best time to buy? How do I read the charts? And I always say to people, look, don't. Just, 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 just don't. Don't trade Bitcoin. Don't trade cryptocurrencies. Now, trading is definitely something one can do and one can make money from doing so. But trading is like any skill, like, like cooking even. If I said to you, I want to be a Michelin star chef. The first question I'll ask is, okay, how many dishes, how many meals will you ruin before you get there? Anyone reasonable will say, yeah, quite a few. Actually, I'll probably wreck most of my dishes initially. And then eventually at some point I'll gain that skill and I will learn how to deliver and then I become a, a professional. Likewise is trading. Um, initially you would wreck yourself a lot. And then at some point down the line, maybe you get good enough whereby you make profit on, on your trades. But the problem or the difference between trading and being a chef is that with a chef, all you're doing is ruining food, which ain't that expensive. With trading though, you're literally losing capital and, and often it's a lot. So can you imagine doing the trade, 2,000 pounds, 3,000 pounds, 10,000 pounds trade and losing 50% of that one because it went, went opposite. And you thought, wait, it will go up some more and then it didn't, and you lost some more. And then you thought, wait, no, inshallah, it will, it will, it will kick back right, right now is the right time and you lost even more. Uh, money's gone. And there's a big difference between losing a large amount of money and burning a meal. Burning a meal doesn't necessarily mean you want to give up. You just try again. Losing capital you worked hard for crushes many people emotionally. So if you want to actually learn trading, generally speaking, then I would say trade with something something small like 100 quid, 200 quid max and just, just that's it. Just trade with something small like that and do so for at least a year or two through a bull market and a bear market. Learn how to read the charts and the skills and so on and so forth. But don't trade real capital. Just learn the skill with a small disposable amount of money, but don't trade to earn money because you're not going to do so um, realistically. Everyone makes money in the bull market trading, but the, often the problem is that, uh, that um, it's when it goes bearish or when it starts going down, people lose more than they probably made in the first place. So anyone who's been in Bitcoin long, longer than a year or two will tell you the same thing. Don't trade unless you know what you're doing. Um, best thing to do is DCA, which is, what, which is what I want to get to. DCA 
is probably the easiest way for you to get involved in cryptocurrencies or Bitcoin, I should say specifically. Um, Stress-free, uh, it's a proven plan to work for 99.99% of people. And if your aim is a long-term goal, then it's the best thing for you. What does DCA mean? It means dollar cost averaging. That means that every, whatever plan you wanna do, so every week, every two weeks, every month, uh, you just buy a set amount on a set day of the week and that's it. So if you choose every Monday, I wanna put 100 pounds in, then do that. Every Monday, wake up, before you go to work, brush your teeth, get your clothes on, open your app, transfer 100 pounds to your Coinbase or your Swissborg, buy the amount, put the app away, go to work. That's it. Don't open your app, don't look at the charts, don't do anything until the next Monday we open the chart, do things and just buy. So you basically it's like a savings plan. Every day or every week, every week, two weeks, buy a certain amount and forget about it until next week. Now, why is that good? What it means is that whether, if Bitcoin goes up, you've bought. If it goes down, you've bought. If it's gone sideways, you've bought. So essentially what you're doing is you're evening out the ups and downs and you're getting the average. That's why you choose an indiscriminate time. You don't wait, you're not looking at the charts every minute and going crazy because you're trying to follow the charts. If you're trying to look at something in the short term, it will go up and down sideways, you get panicked. But if you just say every Monday, whatever it's doing, I'll buy. That is the best way for a person to save and build wealth over time. And I would suggest that the minimum amount of time that you put towards this is four to five years, maybe five to six years. Now, the reason why I say that is because of Bitcoin's uh, four-year cycle, which is almost written in stone. It happened three times already. We're in the middle of one right now. It, Bitcoin does it. It, does, it goes up massively, comes down a bit, goes sideways, and it goes up massively again for the next cycle. So we're in the middle of this current cycle. So you, you've already missed some of the move. But like I said, every Monday, every, every Monday, every other Monday, a certain amount, 50 pounds, 100 pounds, 50, 10 pounds, it could be something as small as that, whatever you want to do. Whatever's excess of you don't need it, just don't put rent money in it, obviously. But whatever's excess, put it in and just leave it and forget about it. Don't put in to Bitcoin or purchase Bitcoin with money you actually need to spend. Maybe you need to, maybe you owe rent in two weeks' time. So you think, okay, if I put it in in two weeks' time, maybe in it will go up in two weeks, and then um, I can draw it out. I made a little bit of profit. Don't 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 do that because if you have a time limit on when you have to take it out, it might be at the bottom of a move. Maybe Bitcoin does that, and then does this. Maybe you were here, you bought, and it went up. It got great. But the time we need to actually sell to pay your bills, it's actually come back down. And then you might be actually selling at a loss because you're forced to. Whereas if you dollar cost average, you're not forced to sell. You're just leaving it and taking your time and you're easing your way into the process. Don't waste your time trying to time the market. It's not about timing the market. It's about time in the market. How long you're in this goes a long way. Almost everyone who's into Bitcoin since 2017, 2014, they will tell you the same thing. If they, they will even say, say to you, you know, if I just held Bitcoin rather than traded it, I'll be so much more um, in, in profit than I am right now. Most people say that because um, they thought they could trade. They thought they could beat the market. That was the question. They thought they could beat the market. And nine times out of 10, that's not the case. You have people, you have people who have been trading anything like currencies, stocks for, for years, even decades. And you're going up against them. So, um, uh, and my final point to say about this, the dollar cost averaging, is that you can check out a website called dcabtc.com. Listen carefully. DCA, which is dollar cost average. BTC, which is the sign for Bitcoin, dot com. Check that website out. What it will do. Um, actually, let me see if I can just show you here. Rather than tell you about it, let us... Uh, have a look at it. So, um, dcabtc.com. Is it blocking something? Yes, it was. It was blocking the website. Apologies about that. Yeah, so here we have a look at uh, investment calculator. So, I want to make a plan. I want to put inside Bitcoin £50 or 
um, every week for the last, I said to you, four to five. So let's just say five years. So I'm going to do this for five years. And I started five years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we can see here that the total amount of money I would have put in over those five year period. Remember, this is $50 every week for five years. That would mean the total amount of money I put into Bitcoin would be $13,000. But the actual value, if I had done that from five years before to now, is actually $329,000, um, which is an actual gain of about 2,427%. And you can have a look here about how Bitcoin prices performed. So it was, uh, I guess it's five years ago, it went up and then it went down, and went sideways for a bit, and now we're out going up again. So this is an example how you can, you can back test your plan. Maybe you think, okay, maybe you say to yourself, okay, look, that's not enough to buy a house. I want to buy a house. So let's try a plan of $100. That would have given me, from five years till now, about oh, just over half a million. That's actually enough money to buy a house. Uh, and maybe you say to yourself, look, you know what? I get paid monthly, yeah? So, uh, and every month my budget is whatever. And I, I usually have about 300 pounds remaining after every month that I could save. If I did that just monthly for five years, then I'll, I would have just shy of half a million. So as you can see here, it's a very good way to have an idea. Don't get too gassed with it. Obviously. Don't think, yeah, if I do this, I'll get the money. No, don't think of it like that. Just think of it as um, an idea that if Bitcoin performs in the next five years, like it's performed in the previous five years, then this is what I would have achieved. And if you try to extend it even further than that, say, look, I want to do a 10 year plan, let's say nine years. Um, well, nine years is a bit of a bad one. I won't go for nine years. The only reason why I do that is because I say that because um, um, the price of Bitcoin nine years ago was ridiculously low. Um, could it do the same in the next nine years? I guess so, possible. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet on that. You, you get two guests. I mean, yeah, you did that. All you, all you would invested in this ten years is thirty two thousand dollars, but you'd be a multi millionaire. But Try and manage expectations. So I would stick to five. Um, and inshallah, um, that will be the end result. So check this website out. It'd be good to get an idea of what you could achieve by just doing something as simple as pressing buy once a week or once a month and forgetting about it. Um, like I said, it's not about time in the market, getting in at the right time. It's about time in the market, being in it in a long enough period of time for Bitcoin to mature for you and your wealth to grow gradually. And then maybe in, in else five years time, you could think of how you can do business. Maybe you can set up something later on. Maybe, maybe, just, maybe not just spend it all in the house. Maybe you want to do other things with your money. Um, but this is one way I would suggest you build your Bitcoin wealth and stack those sats. The other way would be to actually get a job and get paid in Bitcoin. But that's something you have to work on. Probably deal with that in another video moving forward. Anyway, I hope you find this video beneficial. And may Allah give you plenty of Bitcoin via DCA. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.